Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, Cosmic Alpha, Pop! OS, Cosmic Desktop Environment. This article just dropped and I'm really excited to be checking this out with you guys. I'm losing sleep over it and I missed one day of Duolingo. At least I'm gonna miss one day of Duolingo for you guys, but if this video does well, then it's all gonna be worth it. So without further delay, let's dive right in. Okay, so Cosmic Alpha Countdown, I am so excited. So they said in January they were going to set a goal to release the Cosmic Alpha at the end of the first quarter. Well, we have exciting news. Cosmic application development has gone much faster and smoother than anticipated. That's always a wonderful news. And we have nearly completed Terminal and Edit Text Editor. I think I showed off these two apps before and they have made significant progress on files and the application store. Pretty interesting things to see coming up. Cosmic Apps Showcase, what's possible with the Lib Cosmic Widget Library. So this is what they're using, the Iced Toolkit, which sounds cool as hell, and the Cosmic Theming System. They also help demonstrate the long-term vision for the platform with how far they've come They've decided to delay the alpha release until the core apps reach MVP. Minimum viable product. Okay. Now, maybe some of you guys are going to be upset hearing this, but it's okay. We have waited this long. We can wait a few more minutes compared to how long we've already waited. And I think it's going to be amazing. This is another, another, I mean, this is another one of those problems that happens with game development where fans get very, very wild up over delays, but that is completely expected. This is fair. People are working behind software, not robots. Give humans their time. Okay. Okay. So this puts them somewhere around late May for the alpha, which is perfect. However, this does not change our overall timeline. The completed release is still expected later this year, along with Pop! OS 24.04. Okay, so definitely not aligning with Ubuntu release, but it is going to come. That is a guarantee. So what does an alpha release mean? So during alpha development, the features are created. Okay, this is for people who don't know what an alpha is. So the features will be created and they will be released with only engineering sign off. So what happens during this phase is things are expected to break, features are not expected to work, and they do uh, testing, a lot of uh, testing to see if the features are holding up, they uh, they code, they fix their code, the bugs in the code, they do all kinds of stuff, they do debugging, and everything just moves fast, especially if you're working in Agile. I'm sure my software development bros are gonna know what I'm talking about. Cosmic will have two alpha releases after the first beta. Features and major bugs are considered resolved and new code requires engineering, QA, and sometimes design sign off before release. A very robust process and while having worked in software, I know that this has its pros. Finished items, so they do have the hybrid graphics done. There are some potential performance improvements still to come. This is always a good thing to hear, but hybrid graphics is now alpha ready. Cosmic works with graphics drivers to provide greater control, predictability, and performance with hybrid graphics. Hybrid graphics, if you didn't know what it is, let me show you in, let me show you what's available currently in Pop! OS. So this is hybrid graphics. What it means is that my laptop has both an integrated Intel, GPU and an NVIDIA discrete graphics card. I have a 4060 mobile currently in my laptop. Uh, not currently, it's gonna be there until the death of this laptop, but yeah, whatever, you get the idea. So what happens is by default, if you're trying to run the NVIDIA graphics all the time, it's gonna take a lot of power from the wall. Or if you're trying to run it off of a battery, you're looking at, I don't know, one hour to one and a half hours of battery life, not great, right? So what you would wanna do is for simple tasks like this, you want to have your Intel iGPU or AMD iGPU taking the load and uh, like giving us a better battery life because it's so efficient, doesn't require all that power. And you can always launch any application you want with a right click and launch using discrete graphics card. And any games you launch, they I think will automatically be launched with the NVIDIA uh, card if, if it detects. I'm not really sure that's how it functions in Windows, but uh, just just tell me, let me know down in the comments, but gra hybrid graphics is the best way to ensure that you have the best performance when you need it and the best battery life when you're not doing anything crazy. Okay, 
Let's move on. Thanks to improvements in graphics drivers over the years, a hybrid graphics mode now has minimal impact on battery life when the GPU is not in use. So this is another thing which you have to keep in mind is that even though the GPU is not used in some power modes uh, on Windows, because I'm using a Lenovo LOQ device, and if I am on auto mode or performance mode, even if the graphics card, the, the Nvidia graphics card isn't used, it still sucks up a little bit of voltage. And so, I mean, you are still losing power, especially for on battery. I don't, I think it gets disabled on battery. I'm not, not really sure. Uh, because whenever I'm on battery, I use the low power mode, which turns off the graphics card completely to save battery. But if you are running a hybrid graphics mode on a laptop with dual graphics cards, this is going to be less of a headache. That's the entire point. Wayland and Cosmic Comp, meanwhile, give us more control over what causes the GPU to turn on. This is really important to save your battery. And when Cosmic users wish to save laptop battery, the battery applet would tell them when the GPU is being used and which apps are using it. Closing those apps will turn off the GPU as soon as simple as that. Okay, moving on to minimize and restore. Functionality has been implemented to minimize and restore windows. Minimized windows appear in a specialized minimize windows applet that will be on the dock by default, but can also be added to the panel. That's good. When apps are minimized, they will animate to the minimize windows applet and show a small preview where they can be restored from. I love this preview, especially if it's a live preview like it is on windows. I really love this. I have loved this ever since I first discovered it on Windows 7. New wallpapers, viewers of my channel will know how much of an importance this carries to me. So the initial nine of our set of wallpapers have been chosen. We will showcase these in a separate blog post down the line. Womp, womp, womp. Not really, this is focused on something else and I would love to see a dedicated wallpapers blog post tiling applet now the tiling applet has been implemented here users can view tiling shortcuts show or hide the active hint which is really good according to me toggle between tiled or floating windows as well as tile workspaces per workspace meaning you can take advantage of both tiled and floating workspaces in the same session this is incredible i'm gonna be honest with you i don't really use tiling but i really really like this where you have everything that you might want. So you have automatically a tile current workspace, which is off by default. That is okay. Tile windows on workspaces per workspace and new workspace behavior is floating by default. You can always change it back to tiled, but these are just some sane defaults. You also have the shortcuts for navigate windows, move window, toggle window, and you can always turn off the active hint, which is sometimes needed. If you are, you know, if you're super focused, if you're super productive, you need the hint. At least I do. Now coming to input device settings. Input device, input settings panel and functionality have been implemented. The updated panel shows the latest stylings used as well as features like tap to click. This is so much useful to me. Edge scrolling, not really useful and toggling touchpad acceleration. It is on by default in most laptops, never really messed with it and keyboard settings such as input source and shortcuts are being implemented. What I would love to see is since it has touchpad and mouse separated, um, having touchpad acceleration on, but mouse acceleration off for gaming, uh, for practicing your aiming and stuff for first person shooter games, that is going to be really important. And that is going to be really good. And in, in Apple and Mac OS, just touchpad and uh, mouse scrolling direction, they're linked somehow. I never really understand why it's just 2024 the last time I checked and it's really good to see uh, pop OS or any other Linux or Windows even for that matter having separate settings where they're not linked where the scrolling direction is not linked. You have workarounds on Mac OS but that's beside the point of this video. Let's just go back to pop OS before I digress. So we have input devices. This is looking cool by the way. Primary button left for right-handed people. I am left-handed, but I use the mouse with my right hand. Touchpad speed is at 45, that's the default. You can enable touchpad acceleration, disable while typing, which is really good if you have bad palm rejection on your uh, laptop. This would help immensely. So you also have click behavior, secondary click with two fingers and middle click with three fingers, that's good. Secondary click in bottom right corner and middle click in the bottom center. 
it's off by default, understandable, very few people use it. Or maybe if you use this, let me know down in the comments. Another way to increase my engagement. <laughs> anyway, tap to click is on by default. And scrolling is scroll with two fingers. That is optional. I mean, that's obviously enabled by default. Scroll along the edge with one finger. I'm not really a big fan because I like to have the entire tr uh, trackpad to myself, especially with Windows laptops, not having the biggest trackpads. And scrolling speed is set at 50. Okay, natural scrolling. I like to enable natural scrolling because uh, with two fingers, I like to enable natural scrolling. And with if I am at the edge, if I have that, I would like to have just the normal scrolling. And you also have swiping. So switch between windows and stuff. That is very cool. And now we are at the final stretch cosmic terminal. And remember guys, I'm gonna have to edit the video after recording it. So yeah. And I'm sweating right now currently because I have to turn the fan off and it's summer where I am and it's very hot despite the fact that I have the window open and it's blowing nicely. I mean, the breeze is blowing nicely. Cosmic Terminal. Okay, remaining items for Cosmic Terminal's alpha release include support for dragging and dropping file paths into the terminal as well as confirmation dialogue if the user attempts to close the terminal while a process is running. This is really important because sometimes you're doing updates and stuff that is really important to give a confirmation dialogue when a process is executing so you don't accidentally interrupt that process. Cosmic Edit. So this is the text editor to finish up Cosmic's text editor. They are in the process of adding spell check. Very good. The ability to restore a session and a feature to revert all changes in your session. I guess this is only for English, but uh, if there are other languages, if anybody, if anybody from Pop! OS is watching this video, please let me know. I would be very happy to see other languages included as well. App and applet icons, so new icons for cosmic apps and applets are on the way. Some are completed, but we're still adjusting the colors on the others. And this is really important because I'm sorry to say this, but I, I've just really grown tired of this color. I mean, I mean, Pop! OS is my favorite distro and colors do not get in the way of me being productive with Pop! OS, which Pop! OS helps me be immensely productive. It's really good for what I do. And but even then, I mean, after especially after the advent of GNOME 40 and stuff, I just it's getting a little bit long in the tooth and I would really like to see some new colors, changeable colors, etc, etc. Cosmic Files, the Cosmic Files MVP designs are complete and implementation is underway. More styling will be needed to implement, uh, will be needed, will need to be implemented to match the final designs. But here is the current state of the application seen in screenshots. So let's just go through them one by one. File, edit view, looking good. The sidebar to open or close the sidebar, I guess. That's okay. You have the path over here shown as uh, little tabs and you can also edit the path. That is something which is really exciting. You have the maximize button by default. That is something I like to see. And yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, let's move on to the next one. And this is another view. I guess this would be the detailed view uh yeah it looks looks good nothing to complain man i mean i'm excited for pop os obviously that's why i'm not sleeping when i should be new additions theming support was added to cosmic's implementation of xdg desktop portal that enables other applications toolkits here dark mode light mode the user's configured accent color and now we have light mode legibility. So font rendering quality for dark text rendered onto a light background has been improved thanks to the upstream upstream iced toolkits, new color management. That's a great thing to see. The web colors uh, features uses the same methods to render colors as web browsers. So that is good. So image comparing font rendering quality in light mode between cosmic with right and without. Uh, okay, so right is the good one. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it looks better, I guess. Uh, it, it looks, I don't know, it looks like it's sick, like not so legible, not so bold. It looks looks like it didn't have food and this is well fed. You went to your Indian grandmother's home and you had, you had good things to eat. Okay, so yeah, that's it. We are uh, unfortunately at the end of this video. And by the way, Cosmic LNFW, Linux Fest Northwest, if you're interested, Saturday, April 27th at noon. I don't live in America, but if you're giving me free tickets, I'm down to go.
anyway that's i'm just kidding I, I, even though i would love to go really okay so yeah that was it guys cosmic de amazing amazing things i'm really excited for this to come around and now i have to edit the video so i'll catch you on the next one peace